What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the past week. If you enjoy the Scale News Update, hit the like button. Let's jump into this week's topics. First for this week, we had the official release of the FuraTech FX118 Fury Wagon RTR. This is a brushless 118th scale RTR. Now, it's a upgraded kind of version of the Hobby Plus CR18. Again, it is 18 scale, so not going to directly compete with the 124 scale side, but it's in the wheelhouse of it at least. The biggest thing is, is that this is coming in at 199 and it's brushless portals, you know, aluminum chassis. Now the, the chassis, whether or not that means a whole lot, but just having the FureTech brushless system in there out of the box and a four channel radio, there's a lot of punching power there for its price. I feel like anyone who's shopping around in that area, in that ballpark, is gonna have to give this one another look. It's coming out in a bunch of different colors, you know, red and green, black with flames, and the paint job even on like the green one's got like a heavy metallic in it, which looks pretty good. The wheels are 1.2 inch rather than a standard one inch. And it's got some fairly aggressive looking tires from some of the video reviews that were put out. The tires sound, sounds like some people like them. Some people think that, you know, they'll do, but if you're really going for all out performance, there's some better options out there possibly. So not to be surprised there, but just in general for $199, it seems like this one's a pretty decent deal. These are currently on pre-order, so no idea how quickly these will be shipping or not. I didn't see an exact date of when they were trying to nail that down, but if you're interested on it, maybe jump in on that pre-order early. Next, it looks like we've got a new cross vehicle coming. Now, I was sent these photos and I couldn't really find anything more, but after a little bit of digging and looking at the license plate in the videos, I saw that it said Emo NT4 and doing some searching with that name, I did come across a couple of listings from overseas. Now, the Emo chassis is something that we've seen used with a couple of different bodies so far, and this is pretty similar to that. It's a portal axle, 110 scale. It's got locking and unlocking differentials and a two speed and now it's got this NT4 Unimog-esque body that will set on top. Price on this thing is gonna be in the mid 300s. Depending on where you're shopping and getting things from, you might see a higher price if you're shopping directly in the States or if you get it from overseas, maybe you're just gonna pay a little bit of shipping to get it here with that lower price tag. The Emo platform from Cross has a lot of similarities to the Traxxas TRX4 platform in design and style and features. But the price tag on the Cross is a little bit lower when you're comparing feature to feature. However, availability of replacement parts and lack of aftermarket are going to fight against the cross. So far, I'm not seeing these available anywhere stateside. I'm also not even seeing them listed on the cross website themselves. Their websites are not great, either the US or overseas, or social media, real bad. Just in general, this company does not get information out in an efficient manner. <laughs> so uh, when you'll see these or when all the official information will come out, yet to be seen, but if you're interested in it, just keep an eye out. Last week, we talked about this Laysu 406 Unimog with the Overland bed on the back, and they've already put some photos out of a prototype of this. This is an actual thin sheet metal box that looks like it's uh, welded together in a number of areas, done extremely well with a lot of detail, nice hinges on it, all the compartments open, the roof hinges open, possibly it's gonna have fabric in there, but I'm not 100% sure. Not sure how they're gonna finish out this whole thing. But no matter what, this thing looks fantastic. Still haven't seen final details on availability, pricing, or how you're going to get these, but looks like quite the work of art as far as the scale detail in that style of platform. If that type of style and driving platform is your thing, I could see getting ready to spend a decent amount of money. Next, Holmes Hobbies released the Crawlmaster V3 last week. This is an AM32 based ESC. I believe AM32 came into the hobby market first in the drone side and then has worked into the land-based stuff that we have now. Now, the Crawlmaster V3 may look familiar with other ESCs like it. So while visually it may look similar, there is both some hardware and software changes done to this ESC to offer Holmes's own version of it. 
Getting into some of the details listed, it does say that it has an exclusive sine wave startup, which is similar to the FOC used on the hobby wing stuff to try and give you just a consistent, you know, it varies the amplitude of the throttle while trying to keep the wheel speed or the RPMs of the motor consistent throughout. There is no on off switch. It does have a programming port right on there. If you'd like to get a programmer, I believe Holmes is also offering those. These do switch at a super high frequency so you don't get that whine of outrunner motors that you may have first been introduced to, but this should keep those nice and silent. If you want all the rest of the details and information available on this, a link to where you can find the Crawlmaster V3 on the Holmes Hobbies website, go check that out. New this week from FTX is the Stinger. This is a 110 scale RTR. This is an on-road platform similar to like the Phaser or the Apex that we've been seeing from Kyosho and Associated lately. Just a, you know, on-road pan car style, but with a nicely done body. This is a, not a challenger but obviously similar. However, this does have a 3300 kV brushless system inside. And it also has universal style front drive shafts, a couple of bonuses over the other options. Right now, FTX is not something we see widely distributed here in the US, but in Europe, these are much more common to see, I believe specifically the UK. Oftentimes though, you can find the FTX products under like the original manufacturer's name, which you can find from some of the overseas websites. Sometimes the bodies are a little different, which I think is the key selling point to this one. Well, if you, if you like challengers, it doesn't have any yellow chin guards. So it's a, you know, tally in the cons section. Lots of low C pro moto upgrade parts are rolling into the dealers and distributors everywhere. If you had thought about ordering some of those upgrades when you maybe first got your bike, but didn't, looks like all that stuff is in stock now in all of the colors. I guess I didn't see originally that low C had released aftermarket pegs for it even, which I don't know why I find that to be so funny on, it shouldn't surprise me. Of course, of course we'll be able to replace everything. I, I don't even notice. I don't even know if I noticed that it had actual foot pegs on the bike. I've just been driving it, which has been a blast. If you're looking for pro moto parts, low C's options are in stock. And speaking of that, Triel also has a bunch of options as well in a number of colors. And they've got some new wheel options, one of which has the aluminum wheel rings, but carbon fiber wheel face, which doesn't look too bad. If you like that, you know, kind of three piece look in that style, something a little bit different, maybe, maybe it looks a little bit more appropriate with supermoto tires, but to each their own on style, of course. So there you go, a couple of different places you can look for for parts options. I've linked both of them below. To me, it just had a big whack of releases or re-releases announced. First of which is the, to me, a Fiat 131 Abarth. Abarth, it's hard to say. MF01X chassis is what this will sit on top of. The pretty basic chassis, you know, you're getting the friction shocks, you're getting bushings. Really, you're just getting something to hold that little Fiat rally style body on top. If it's something you love, then you'll understand why. Maybe you need to buy that, like many of us have to talk ourselves into when we buy multiple Tamiya kits. The other one that looked pretty fun was the squash van. I don't I don't know where the name, I don't know what the name means, where it came from or why it's funny, but this is on that GFO2 platform. And this one they've released before in a couple of different bodies, I think. One was the school bus, and I think one might have been the uh, semi, but it's a four wheel drive. However, the four wheel drive is done by like just a huge gear train. Rather than a shaft drive or a belt, it just uses a bunch of gears to get the power from the back to the front. Super odd, no idea why that <laughs> was used or why that design style was just checked off, but there it is for you. Also using friction shocks, uh, absolutely nothing fancy. It just kind of has a cool body. I don't hate that body at all. I'm, I'm kind of on board with it, but if someone could explain squash fan to me, that would be greatly helpful. And then for those of you into vintage to me is they've got the super sabre or saber. Not 100% sure, I've heard it both ways, but this was originally from 1987 and it was re-released in the 90s, but that was the last time. So, uh, I mean, that could be up to 30 plus years ago, if you're doing math. Old school tub style chassis on these, if you're shopping for this, it's likely because 
uh, you had one or you wanted to have one back in the original time it was released or possibly on the re-release. But if you're a vintage guy, you probably know if you want this or not already. This Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, come join us for Livestream Takeover. This week, Matt and I will be spinning the wheel to determine the budget for the first week of the upcoming Four Dice budget build. Matt and I are going to dive into another budget build, but we're doing it a little different this time. Doing The budget is gonna be determined on the wheel that we're gonna spin each week during Livestream Takeover. So first week's gonna happen this week for spinning, and you'll see the first release of the budget build the following Wednesday. So check in for that. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Should be a fun twist to the whole premise of that series, which was already a little weird. And of course, Friday Night Live, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern as well. Every Friday, we've been getting things done, and this week should be no exception. I have lots of work to do. We have events coming up. I have projects rolling. Hopefully you guys are in for it. Come join me, hang out, live chat, whatever it is. Last week I asked you guys what kind of offer it would take to, for someone to take all of your RC possessions from you. I needed a dollar amount, which was a tough one. And a lot of you, I feel like, likely in a very similar boat to me, and it's a lot more than you would really like to disclose in the end. It actually came up as a part of an insurance thing for me, and I was like, ooh. This is a question I think I should make everybody have to sit down and think of. For this week's question, I wanna ask you, what was the last thing that just went right for you? Whether you were working on a project and you got something done and you're just like, that worked out exactly how I had hoped. Not just thought it would, but like how you actually hoped it would. RC related or not. If there was something big that was non-RC related that just went the way you really hoped it would have, let us know. Put it in the comments below. As always, I appreciate you guys taking the time to drop a comment below. It is my favorite part of the Scale News Update. With that, thanks as always for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoy these videos. Subscribe if you're not already and hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. With that, thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.